strategy trees provide a tool that bridges the gap between model completion and deployment using prescriptive analytics. Strategy trees use model results to guide how a record or segment should be treated and displays results in an easy to use visual manner. This demonstration uses a marketing data set to create strategies to better target customers. The data contains variables such as demographics, financials and a dependent variable here called DV. The DV contains two values, yes and no, reflecting whether someone responded to an offer in the past. The aim is to develop a model to aid in promoting a new credit card offer. The first step is to assess the data. Angos streamlined profiling features including statistics and charts can be leveraged in this regard. The DV distribution is illustrated using a pie chart. Here the proportion of those responding and those not responding is visible. The segment viewer can be used to further assess how dataset variables are distributed across the dependent variable categories and can highlight potentially good model predictors. With exploration complete, the next step is to build a decision tree model. Interactive and automated building methods are available when creating decision trees using Angos and are accessible by right-clicking. Decision trees assign a probability score to predict the likelihood of an outcome. Further work is required to aid analysts and business users to assess the resulting segments, assign treatments and put appropriate strategies in place. One way to create a strategy is to use a decision tree as a template. The entire structure of the decision tree is duplicated with the added facility to augment segments with additional calculations. Adding calculations help explore data from a business point of view. Additional calculations can easily be added through a series of helpers that are a part of the tool. Here, two KPIs, profitability and loyalty, which indicate average segment profit and average number of products purchased respectively, are added. Notice the KPIs are visible at the root node, reflecting overall dataset averages, and also cascade to other nodes. The calculations highlight where the most profitable customers are, but this can be hard to see just looking at the numbers. Colors can be applied to highlight nodes with higher values for a selected KPI. Here the coloring goes from white to red and the selected KPI is profitability. Nodes with higher values for the KPI profitability are now more readily visible. Once KPIs have been successfully added, prescriptive analytics, the process of leveraging business rules and applying treatments can commence. Treatments are the prescriptive measure assigned to each segment based not only on the propensity to respond, but also taking the KPI values into account. This provides the ability to assign treatments on a basis that is aligned with the segment features. The gold offer is assigned to the group with the highest average profit. Next, the basic card offer is assigned to some of the other groups, which are not necessarily quite as highly profitable, but still have good loyalty and are worth pursuing. Lastly, there are the unprofitable segments, and to these the divest treatment is assigned to remove those records from receiving an offer. There are various ways to visualize and explore the treatments assigned to see how the strategy is going to perform. The simplest way is just to color all nodes based on the assigned treatment. The defaults can be accepted or customization can be added. Coloring treatments makes visible the proportion of each segment assigned each treatment. For example, the husband and wife group has a large proportion of those receiving the gold card offer, but that represents a relatively small proportion of the overall population. Another tool available is the node report. This provides a tabular overview of the data for each of the nodes, including node size, assigned treatment, as well as the KPIs. At the bottom of the report, a list of all the treatments is visible with the number and percentage of records assigned. This view can also be split to show both the node report and strategy tree at the same time. When a node is selected in one, the corresponding node is highlighted in the other. Additionally, the table can be sorted by any available column. For example, here sorting by the KPI profitability highlights the nodes with the highest and lowest average profit. From here, treatments can also be assigned and reassigned. For example, to change the gold card offer to the silver requires some simple steps. Once complete, all other views update. Another useful feature of treatments is to be able to edit the treatment list and assign cost and revenue for each treatment. This allows overall cost and revenue values to be easily assessed. Another way to construct a strategy tree is to use the score from a decision tree to segment the population. Here the decision tree is used to score the data. The data is split by the decision tree score and using the binning editor similar values can be binned. From here the tree can be expanded further, assigned calculations, colors and ultimately treatments. Another way to build a strategy is to insert a strategy tree on a dataset without using a decision tree or any other model as a template. This provides flexibility to manipulate the tree accordingly. Once created, all that is visible is the root node with all records. Calculations can be created or imported from another strategy tree. Another advantage of strategy trees is being able to combine different objectives in different segments. This basically means the ability to have different dependent variables for each segment.
For example, selecting dv as the dependent variable returns the best driver of that dependent variable, in this case relationship. Then for this first node that has a very high propensity to accept an offer, maybe there is interest in changing the dependent variable to assess the best driver of the amount of sales. All these segments and drivers can then be used to assign different strategies in different groups. The high value segments might receive a bonus where the low value segments might be targeted for a cross-sell campaign. For those segments with low propensity scores, a standard mailing is assigned. Once KPIs have been calculated and treatments assigned, the next step is validation. Validation compares KPIs across scored datasets and helps uncover the impact of treatments, basically assessing the validity of the strategy. It also helps track the strategy over time to see if its effectiveness is maintained. Building a validation tree is a straightforward process and generates a comparison of KPIs, as well as the number of records in both training and validation datasets. Each node shows exactly the difference between the validation and the design dataset. The strategy performance can be assessed and nodes of interest can be tagged for further follow-up. Here the nodes with a negative number for profitability are selected. These are the nodes that are not performing well. Switching to the node report shows only the tag nodes and allows further assessment of those nodes. Next steps would be to review the campaign to determine why it's not performing at the expected level. Once the strategy is validated, it can be deployed. Code can be generated for the strategy tree in a number of formats including SQL, Java, Language of SAS, SPSS, XML, PMML and others. For any Language of SAS model, the code is outputted in the form of a macro for ease of deployment. Throughout this demonstration, we've seen how strategy trees are a powerful tool for applying predictive analytics, transforming key performance indicators and business knowledge into actionable strategies. Strategy trees are available in Knowledge Seeker, Knowledge Studio, and Knowledge Reader. For more information on these and other Angos Analytics products and services, visit us at angos.com.